What's up everybody? Today's tutorial is going to be super fun because we're creating a very colorful, bold, duochrome eyeshadow look. If you want to see how I created this look right here, well then keep on watching. I'm going to be using two eyeshadow palettes from Danessa Myricks, but don't feel like you have to have these palettes in order to follow along. You're going to need a palette that has some neutrals, some browns. This is to create the initial shape of the eye. And then you're going to need some colorful multi-chrome shades. So I'm gonna be using a blue, a purple, and I think like a gold for the inner corner. So if you have those colors and another brand, another product, go ahead and pull it out. Either way, I think that the technique is what is valuable here and you can use different colors to create the same effect. All right, I've already done all of my complexion off camera. Let me pin my hair back. I've also applied some eye primer. I use the Anastasia eye primer and now I'm gonna get started with the neutral palette. First I'm gonna go into Mirage with this fluffy brush and I'm gonna put it all over the lid. The look we're recreating was done by Danessa Myricks and I am gonna be making some tweaks. The first one being this step. I'm using Mirage here to give the crease more definition. I don't think she put anything here on the crease but I like more of a soft edge meaning that once you have the duochrome color here over the the lid. I don't want a sharp contrast between that color and the skin. I want it to be more of a softer transition, a gradient-y transition. So that is why I'm working this light brown into the crease to give me that soft transition. And it's also gonna go here under the brow. And once again, I'm taking Mirage with a pointy brush this time and I'm gonna run it along the lower lash line. One thing that I really like about this palette is that it is very beginner friendly because all of these shades go in very softly and they're very easy to use. So you don't have to worry that you're gonna be stamping a blob of pigment and you're gonna have a hard time blending it after. This is extremely, extremely user-friendly. We're done with that first eyeshadow. We're gonna be using three different tones as the base first. So now I'm gonna go into Sculpted, again with the same pointy brush that I was using for the lash line. Going into Sculpted and just, I'm gonna place it here, like underneath the previous eyeshadow because I want more depth here. So I'm taking Sculpted again on the other eye. And I'm taking that same shade Sculpted on the lower lash line, concentrating mostly here on the outer third. Okay, from this point forward, we're going to be following exactly what Danessa did for the look. So grab a little bit of black shadow and she put it really close to the lash line. A thin line, but here on the outer corner, she blended it more, something like this. I'm switching to a tiny rougher brush just because I want to get that black really close to the lash line. I don't know if it happens to you, but every time that I do my eyeshadow and I intend it to get close to the lash line, there's always like a bald spot. So I have to remember to make sure to use a tiny brush and run it along those roots. All right, and with that same brush, I'm gonna take that and do the same thing here on the lower lash line. Oh no, I just realized that I forgot to put loose powder under my eyes because we will have some fallout. So if you did your complexion before your eyes, as I did here, be sure to lay down a layer. I need more powder, hold on. Yeah, we need a generous layer of powder so that it catches any fallout from the eyeshadows. And the powder that I'm using is the one from Laura Mercier. All right, now we're gonna start adding some color, starting with the brow bone. Let me show you the shade that we're gonna use, which is the one Danessa used, this one called Protected. Look at that, wow. It's like a frosty white lilac just an iridescent, I see some orange, very cool shade. So we're gonna take Protected on the brow bone and she put it on with her fingers. Okay, just like that. It's subtle, but it's definitely there. I'm seeing the lilac hue there and I'm sure that when the, it catches the light from different angles, different shifts will show. And for the lash line, we're gonna start, I am a little bit nervous, Strong, which is this blue color and I'm using the tiny little rougher brush that I used earlier. And she took it all the way in from here 
and then all the way out. Look at this pigment, and this is without wetting the brush. One thing that I realized that I forgot is to rim the waterline with black. So I'm gonna do that now because it is going to make a difference. It's just gonna make the blue pop even more. Should I grab the pomade or the powder? I don't know. Maybe the powder? Feel free to just use a black eyeliner. I'm just um, using this palette because I want to continue to test it. Hold on, let me take the pomade. I am having a bit of a hard time getting the black on the waterline. Is it not staying? I mean, it's staying, but lightly, and I don't want to go over my waterline over and over again because it'll get irritated. Yeah, I'm just going to use my black eyeliner, and this one is from KVD and Trooper Black. So this is what it's looking like so far. And while we're at it with this same black liner, I am going to tight line and I like to spray my eyeliners with some alcohol once in a while just in case I'm just getting my alcohol out and I will spray it on after I'm done here no one wants eye infections okay I finished using it spray okay I gotta see what this blue looks like if I use something like Duraline or you can just wet your brush I want to see how much more impact we can get so I'm gonna get my Duraline from Inglot and put a drop there and then I'm gonna go into the blue and now let's see okay yes I did get more impact wow oh, this is such a gorgeous blue oh my look at the difference yes oh my god you can totally see the difference between this eye and this eye the blue pops so much more right okay let's do the same thing on the other eye I'm gonna wet my brush again go into the shadow let me look at her eyes. It seems like Danessa brought it down. Let me grab a little bit more, but I'm gonna wet it to avoid the fallout and also to get more impact. I'm looking at her inner corner and it looks like the blue goes down, comes down quite a bit. Like it doesn't stay tight on the waterline. So I'm gonna bring it down a little. This blue is incredible. So let me swatch what we're gonna put in the inner corner. It's this guy i'm gonna wet my brush again same brush and just grab the tiniest bit because it's flaky so i'm pressing this look that we're recreating danessa did during the launch of the of her palette so she was trying to fit as many colors as possible that's why she used two colors in the inner corner so this first one she put more on the lower and i'm just trying to pick up more because i'm having a bit of a hard time maybe there she used this one brave on the inner lower corner so like right here on top of the blue wow you see that look at the inner corner here versus here you see that pop? Wow! I'm looking here in the other mirror. This looks incredible! Okay, let's do the other eye. That is so cool. I didn't think that any of these shades were going to surprise me because I swatched all of them. I've used these, but wow, this is so intense. That was Brave, the flaky one. And you know how I had said that I did not like the flaky formulas because you have to press kind of hard on the eye to spread them. Well, this, it looks amazing and I didn't have to press hard to spread it. Maybe on a larger surface area, it would give me trouble, but not in a smaller surface area. I don't know. Okay, let's move on to the next color. So for the second shade that we're gonna put in the inner corner, she put it more here in this area and you'll see, you'll see where I put it. Let me show you the shade that is Fearless. Yeah, this one right here. So let me just swatch it because we must take every opportunity to swatch these beautiful eyeshadows. Here we go. Wow, look at that. Okay, here we go. And she used a brush sort of like this one. This is from Sigma E42. Let's pick it up. Yeah, it was kind of fluffy, her brush. I don't want to work with a lot of it. So uh, let me grab my rag here and just tap it on my rag to get rid of some of it. And now we're gonna go into the inner corner, tap it, but also brush it because I don't see it going on. Okay. There, it's going on slowly. I am gonna pick up some more. I can't stop myself. I just want to see more, more bling. I mean, these 
eyeshadows are definitely giving us that bling. I just got more fallout. Okay, I zoomed you in more just to make sure you can get a good look at this. So inner corner, we're working on this color right here. Looking incredible. Here's the inner corner with the color fearless. Should I put more on? Should I wet it? I shouldn't, right? It's this flaky one right here. No, I'm not gonna wet it. I want to add some more. It's looking so good that I wanna keep going. Should I keep going? Mm, yes. Honestly, it feels like this is the first time that I'm playing with this palette. This is so much fun. Okay, I'm gonna add just a little bit more and we're gonna leave it at that. What do I do about this fallout? I feel like I have to address it before it's just gonna keep getting worse, but I don't wanna lay more powder on. No, I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, now we're gonna go into the purple that we're gonna put in on most of the lid, not all of it. And I'm using a flat brush. This is a Makeup by Mario E4 because Danessa used a brush, not her fingers. So we're gonna do the same thing. And she put it mainly, well, starting from here up to like the middle of the eye. I think that I'm either going to use my fingers or wet the brush. You know what, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna wet the brush. So again, I'm wetting it with that little bit of Duraline, Duraline, taking more purple. All right, here we go. Uh, the brush doesn't even feel wet. Let me add another drop of Duraline. Two drops. Two drops. Get the brush in there. Some healed. Is nothing happening? I am very confused right now. I don't think that wetting the brush had any effect whatsoever. I wet it yet again. Okay, there. So I just needed to wet it several times and she used stamping motions, like packing motions here. I mean, she did blend a little bit here towards the edge, but mainly packing motions is the way to go. And that is a beautiful purple. This is duochrome. So you know how for duochromes to really show you the multiple shifts, you have to make sure that you put them in a large surface area because if you limit them to only a narrow bit of the eye, it's not gonna get a chance to show you the shift. So I don't know if you can see. Okay, no, you're gonna get the most impact using your fingers. I'm putting my finger into the shadow now. Look at this. Okay, this is the before. See that? Wow. I am mesmerized by these colors, for real. So now we're gonna take the next shade, which is gonna come from the bottom row. So the bottom row has all of the grounding shades. This is where she put the colors that work well out here in the outer V. So they're smokier. They might have darker bases to them. So we're gonna use, what, which one did she use? Powerful, powerful on the outer corner. And I think that this brush will work because it, it, it it's a firm packer brush. Right now I am working powerful onto the other eye. So what do you think about its depth? I think that it's, yeah, it, it's all we need. I don't need to add any more black. Yeah, I don't see the need for like to grab the neutrals palette and add more from the black shadow. I do need to blend it in better though. Okay, I'm taking a fluffy brush to hopefully wipe off the fallout. Yep, nice. Yep, it all just flicked off without a problem. All right, time for some liner and lashes and I'll be right back. I'm gonna put on some liquid eyeliner. This one is from Rare Beauty. Wish me luck. Okay, I'm back with lashes and liner. Now let's do the lips. I'm gonna use this lip liner from Makeup by Mario and Almond. And for the lips, this lipstick from Pat McGrath in the shade Skin Sane. I thought that this would be a really interesting shade because it's sort of metallic, so it's different. It gives you a different finish than a traditional everyday nude lipstick to go with the eyes. Since the eyes are such a statement, we're keeping the lips nude, but they still have a little something special, which is this finish. And look at how pretty that it's covered in glitter. And this is a finished look. You guys, this palette 
is gorgeous. Even though I had already tried on and swatched every single shade, it still surprised me. I think it's stunning. This palette is definitely worth it. Love it and I cannot wait to play with it again. The beauty of this look is that it was easy. It was easy to follow, simple steps. You didn't have any crazy, super detailed work like cut creases or six different eyeshadows with different placements. We really used two, well, aside from the base, the base shades, just your neutral browns, we have the purple, the grounding shade, and underneath we have the blue and some inner corner. Yet this look looks so much more complicated than that. These colors are stunning. I cannot get over it. Highly, highly recommend this palette. Let me know in the comments if you've picked it up. Have you played with it? Do you love it as much as I do? What do you think about this final look? Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.